back in Seoul. It feels so good to be back. Unfortunately, we've only got 24 hours here. We're just here for a layover. We did all the normal landing in Seoul things, right? We arrived in Incheon Airport, made it out through immigration, grabbed some money out of an ATM. Quick hopped on the airport Wi-Fi to let our parents know that we made it safe, of course. I mean, if you're not doing that, like, what are you doing? And then also use that Wi-Fi to buy a Ubiggy, not Aerolo sim. The Ubiggy sims just work a lot better here. Picked out this super adorable T-Money card so that way we can use all the mass transit systems around here. Put about 10,000 won on it. Hopped on the bus to make it downtown and then made it here to Nam Diamond Market to have breakfast because we are so hungry after that long flight. It's our normal $100 per day budget. Put it up on the board. So I can't stop looking at these dumplings. Let's get some dumplings. They are just cranking these things out. They're making like 200 every 10 minutes and they're selling out as soon as they come out. So great. Mm. So juicy. Let me get my face out of the way. So tasty, so deep fried -y. <laughs> I love it. for so long. Ricey, gummy bear, gummy worm texture, covered in savory, sweet, and spicy sauce. So good. It's the perfect snack. It's like kind of sweet and sweet and spicy a little bit. Thank you. What should we get next? Thank you. You're okay? Yeah, good. Yeah, thank you. Very hot. Be okay. careful. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It's a honey seed. Hotia. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ooh, rash hot. Brown sugar and honey syrup mixed together with some seeds inside of a deep fried bun thing. Smushed down. Fry the bejesus out of. Put in a cup. It's like a dollar. It's delicious. I love this thing. This might be my favorite part of Num Diamond Market, and it's the first time we've ever been here. I kind of wish we didn't eat all that food because I would totally eat here. It's just like hidden alleyways full of just small little kitchens, people cooking, and small small restaurants maybe room for three or four people and then you've got like spices and rice cookers everywhere and it smells so good and then every now and then you'll get like glimpses of light coming through shining through from the ceiling this place is awesome this market is so much more than food too there's clothes there's hardware stores there's jewelry there's like an underground shopping mall that has all sorts of electronics basically if you're looking for anything this is a great place to start This place is incredible. There's floor to ceiling amount of things to buy. I never thought that I would be the kind of person that would go home good shopping abroad, but I think I have become that person. Anyway, we gotta get out of here because we're on a budget. <laughs> things that I love about this city is that one moment you're in just like this absolutely insane market and there's just people everywhere and you can barely fit in and then just down the street is something like this. We're at Dioksukong Palace 
sorry if I'm saying that wrong. This is just a beautiful, tranquil palace with a ton of history that I'm not gonna repeat to you so don't just like sound like somebody's just reading Wikipedia to you on the camera. This place is just absolutely beautiful and culturally important and it costs like 75 cents to get into so of course why would you not come here? Why would you not come here? Look at this place. The thing I keep thinking about as we're walking around this palace grounds is just the history of Korea here and how resilient this country truly is. I mean, fires burnt down so many of these buildings and yet here we are. And no matter how many changes, no matter how many invasions and how many fires and how many skyscrapers have risen in Seoul, these palaces are still here. So a lot of the big palaces and temples are all right along this main intersection between like the giant gate right outside of Nam Diamond and then the main palace at the end, Gyeongbokgung, which is where we're heading right now. Another place that has been destroyed and burned down multiple times and then rebuilt back into this amazing thing. And I feel like there's so much of that story that's intertwined with the story of Korea, right? Like they keep getting hit, but then they keep getting back up stronger every single time. And there's obviously tons of history here. And this place represents just so much more than an awesome place to take a selfie. Although, obviously, it is pretty great for that. There's so much good food here and it smells so good as soon as you walk in. I think our favorite thing to get here though is the mung bean pancake. It tastes kind of like a giant hash brown. It's so good. But the hard thing is which place to pick. Feels like we won the lottery. We found a seat at this, at, at this place that sells mung bean pancake and we got a bottle of macchioli. This is very exciting. Tell us what it is while you're shaking it. I don't know. I think you're supposed to shake it up. That's what I heard. Or like twirl it. Okay, so this thing, macchioli, is a delicious like cloudy rice wine sort of thing. Very tasty, very refreshing, a little bit sweet. Got like a little, got like a little heft to it. Obviously like 5% alcohol as well. Mung bean pancake time. Okay. Let's get into this. Oh. <laughs> My American brain always gets confused whenever I hear the word savory and pancake in the same sentence. Like it just doesn't make sense. Every pancake I've ever had since I grew up was like just drowned in syrup and butter and just sweet and delicious. I compare this most to like a hash brown like I was saying. Also has like 10 bajillion grams of fiber. It's very healthy for you except for, you know, the deep friedness of it. <laughs> Oh, that was good. What next? We're craving some of the cold noodles, japchae, I think is why they say it. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll get some dumplings or kimbap. Mm. I love it because it's sesame, savory, not sweet, not spicy, just 
plain, really good noodles with vegetables and sesame oil. It's my favorite flavor. You already know what this is. Super delicious dumplings. Mm. Half of them are kimchi, half of them are pork, I think. That is very hot. Please hold. Delicious. Okay, we're all fueled up, a little bit buzzed. Uh, time to go climb a mountain. Okay, right, so we only got 24 hours here. Why are we spending some of our time climbing up to this like video game final boss's secret lair at the top of this mountain? First of all, because the view up there is absolutely spectacular. And most importantly, because it gives you the false pretense that maybe we're like generally healthy kind of athletic people that do this stuff all the time. So friggin' Mm-hmm. I think my favorite part about this entire park is that it's right in the middle of Seoul, but it feels like you're not even in a big city. It's so green and lush. I definitely wish we had longer than 24 hours here because every time we come back to Seoul, I want to walk along the entire fortress wall. It's such a cool way to see the city, see all the neighborhoods, stop off, eat at all the markets. If you haven't watched our video yet about it, check it out. Here? Somewhere. Okay, we're almost to the top now. We could have taken this freaking cable car all the way up here, which right now seems like a pretty great idea. We can do this. We're almost there. That was so cool. As soon as we made it to the top, there was this beacon lighting ceremony that they have up here. So apparently, like, the amount of beacons that they lit, like the smoke coming out of the top, designates how in danger things are. So one is like, there's no danger, everything's fine. And five is like, there's an active conflict happening at the border. Um, today was just a one, though, so it's a good day. And also, hey, we made it. Yeah. Definitely one of my favorite spots in all of Seoul because you can see everything. The mountains, the rivers, the streams, the hotels that we stay in. And I think that's the World Cup Stadium. There's also a couple of great restaurants and it's like massive shopping mall with an arcade in it. And I think most importantly, there's a convenience store, a GS25 up here that sells beers for pretty cheap. If you're into that sort of thing after climbing a mountain. There's all these really cool coffee shops with incredible views that I had no idea existed if you just go to any of the four floors down below. But you can also buy a coffee from the convenience store and then enjoy the view outside here for free. Um, well, not free. It was 1800 won, so like a dollar, two dollars. A dollar. Um, we only have a limited time left, but we're gonna enjoy the view for a little bit and then we're gonna go where the cool kids hang out. Ow, oh, everything hurts. I'm ready. <laughs> this one's good. Ah, oh, these are great. Amazing. Hold 
hard to fall apart. I love these seats right here. Great for people watching. Let's get a beer here, huh? Mm. I don't know why I love this. I'm so really nice. Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> and, uh... Cheers. <laughs> what a day we're having here. I think I figured out the reason why I like it so much is because it reminds me of just like this is what I would be doing if I were at home, sitting on the lanai or sitting outside and just enjoying a beer. It's great. It's so nice. I can't wait for this. I'm so excited. Okay, so about two weeks ago, I saw that this game was happening during our layover while we were here in Seoul. So, I went online, and I'm like, I'll just buy some tickets online. No problem, it'll be easy. Wrong. And I think that this story kind of applies to buying everything online in South Korea, especially when you're here, if you're a foreigner, as a tourist. The way that we eventually figured out how to do this is our hotel that we dropped off our bags at, we had them purchase tickets that we then paid them back in cash to print us off a piece of paper with the information on it. While we were on our way over here, I learned how to type their name in Korean using the Korean keyboard, and we're gonna put all the info into a machine up there and hopefully it's gonna give us tickets. Honestly, I don't know if any of this is real yet. Yeah, this is a, okay, that was way easier than I thought. Just had to type in some weird stuff, bam, we got our tickets, let's go get some food. I will admit, I'm not the biggest football fan, I'm, I'm learning through Ted Lasso, <laughs> but I feel like it's so much fun to experience local events like this. So, this is, this is my jam. Never been this close to a match Incredible. We were so close to the pitch. That was just awesome. That was just awesome. Alright, there's only one more thing we need to do to cap off this absolutely perfect day. I hope so. starts with a hotiak and ends with a hotiak. See you next time.